Yeah, so there's a, a new book that's out today. Uh, you can buy it right now at Amazon.com. Uh, the title of the book is The Hidden Nazi, The Untold Story of America's Deal with the Devil. I mean, the title sounds intriguing, doesn't it? The author's name is Dean Reuter, and he's on the line with us right now. Dean, uh, welcome to the program. Good morning, Paul. It's great to be with you. Yes, sir. Glad that you're with us. So what made you want to write this book, sir? Well, a dozen years or so ago, a gentleman I've known since college for 30 years uh, approached me because he had been doing some research on World War II, and in doing that research, he came upon one particularly despicable character. Uh, he continued to do research, trying to hunt this guy down, uh, found another researcher in a World War II forum online, uh, Dr. Colm Lowry, uh, and wanted to share uh, information with e each other, research. So he approached me as a lawyer and a friend to write a collaboration agreement so they could share that information without uh, betraying each other. That was Keith Chester and Dr. Cole Mowry, my two researchers and co-authors. Uh, and uh, once I did that, they started sharing information with me bit by bit about this one particular character who's just has outsized power uh, during the war and uh, outsized malevolence uh, and yet had been unexamined by history. I mean, it says here on the Amazon page, the worst Nazi war criminal you've ever heard of. And, and, and what is, what's his name? His name is Hans Kammler. He was an Obergruppenführer, meaning uh, the equivalent of General George Patton in terms of rank. The highest commissioned rank in the SS, the dreaded Schutzstaffel of the German Nazi army. Uh, that was his rank. The only person elevated to that rank during the final year of the war. That's how... Uh, he excelled during that final year of the war. What are some of uh, the atrocities he committed uh, in Germany? Well, I mean, most of your listeners probably uh, have heard about the Holocaust, of course. Uh, what they don't know uh, and what's revealed in the book, The Hidden Nazi, is that Kalmler played a critical role in that. Now, you know, before the war and in the early parts of the war, he was involved. His, his profession is an architect and an engineer uh, with degrees in both including a Ph.D., his, his early projects were pretty benign civil engineering projects. But uh, once the Holocaust got going, it was Hans Kammler who picked the site of Auschwitz as the big expanded camp. He's then the guy who, uh, as an architect, laid out the meets and bounds, the perimeter fence, uh, all the buildings, uh, the infrastructure, the sanitation such as it was, the railways, the roadways. Uh, then he went on to design the basic uh, standard concentration camp barracks. Uh, we got a document, uh, a blueprint with his signature at the bottom uh, with the number of occupants, 550, which would have been horrible, uh, a very high number of people jammed into one building. That number stricken through uh, and 774 is written in. So Whoa. with the stroke, yeah, with the stroke of a pen, you know, he increases human misery uh, in that building, uh, that standard barracks by 30 percent. Um, and from there, he went on uh, to uh, create, design, and install the gas chambers and the ovens. Uh, and I don't mean just from you know the safety of a bureaucratic distance. He was a hands-on operator. He would show up uh, at not just Auschwitz, but many of the other camps uh, weekly, uh, demanding changes, barking orders. Uh, there's one instance where uh, he eventually was in, in charge of uh, German weapons, secret weapons. There's one instance where he suspected sabotage on the assembly line by slaves. Uh, and his remedy then was to order the public hanging of 30 of these slaves uh, as, a, as an example to, okay. uh, to others. This guy, so this guy, was a, this guy was the worst of the worst. Uh, Madman. War, war criminal, yeah. So the book, we're talking with Dean Reuter, the book out today, The Hidden Nazi, The Untold Story of America's Deal with the Devil. So... How come we've never heard of General Hans Kammler? That's a great question. Uh, we've never heard of him because at the end of the war, this is May 1945, he ends up in Prague at a secret weapons site where he's checking some things. Uh, the war's collapsing. Uh, Germany's uh, collapsing. He gets trapped, and according to his driver, he walks off into the woods and shoots and kills himself. The problem with that story is that uh, his driver never collected his identity disc, which were the World War II German version of the, of the dog tag. Never collected his identity disc, his sidearm, his papers, never turned those in. There's never been a body, post-war searches for a grave site. 
uh, have turned up nothing. Um, and then about 50 years later, his adjutant had a different version of his death, that he committed suicide, but it wasn't by gunshot. It was cyanide. It was a slightly different place. Tried to explain why there was no body. Uh, and then a third version of his death emerged. And that's one of the things that uh, got my uh, co-authors, Keith Chester and, and Colm Lowry, interested in writing The Hidden Nazi, because they're the incompatible versions of this madman's death. Uh, and we kept digging and digging and digging, and, and we discovered that he didn't die at the end of the war. But nobody looked for him because everybody presumed him dead. We were in touch with, uh, your listeners might have heard of the Department of Justice, Office of Special Investigation, that our Nazi hunters. Uh, they didn't look for him. We were in touch with them. We were in touch with the Mossad, uh, the Israeli uh, experts. We were in touch with the Wiesenthal Center. Nobody looked for him because they all bought into the suicide story. So did you guys uncover what happened to him? I mean, where did he end up? We do. It's, it, well, it's laid out in, in, in The Hidden Nazi. I, I mentioned that he didn't commit suicide, as, as everyone had, as history would have us believe. Uh, rather, he surrendered to the U.S. Army. Um, and we had him. We interrogated him. Um, I mentioned secret weapons. By the end of the war, uh, this guy was so uh, powerful and talented in the eyes of the Nazi regime, he ended up in charge of all of their secret weapons, including the vengeance weapons. The vengeance weapons are the V-1 and V-2 rockets, which were vastly superior to anything the Americans had or any of the Western allies had. Um, and uh, we believe, and we lay out a very good case, we think, in the, in the book, The Hidden Nazi, uh, that he surrendered himself uh, and, the US ro- and the rocket team, which became the U.S. rocket team, in exchange for his life to try and rehabilitate his career. Uh, and we've got documents uh, proving all of this. So, I mean... The subtitle here, The Untold Story of America's Deal with the Devil. I mean, so this guy, madman, war, war criminal. Um, talk about Werner von Braun. Where does he play in all this? Well, Werner von Braun. So, Kemmler, uh, the, the, the main subject of our story, was, a, was an engineer uh, and an architect. He was not a rocket scientist. Uh, Germany's main rocket scientist was Werner von Braun. Uh, and most people know that he came to the United States at the end of the war, along with a couple hundred other rocket scientists from this team. You, know, you get, don't imagine that this, these rockets were being assembled by five or six guys in a garage. This was a team of thousands of people working at different sites um, to build an un- unbelievably complex uh, set of rockets. Uh, but Von Braun came to the United States after the war. Uh, he really became something of an American hero, um, working on our ICBM helping the United States have the first land, uh, uh, moon landing. Uh, but um, we also discovered some very, very troubling information that hasn't really been discussed before uh, about Von Braun and his involvement in the Nazi regime. Most of the rocket scientists tried to um, either have their records erased, either just not sort of ignored or altered a little bit. Um, so the point of focus would be we were, uh, you know, soldiers doing our jobs. We weren't involved in atrocities. We didn't use slave laborers, for example. We weren't ardent Nazis. We weren't ideologues. We were just sort of along for the ride, good citizens trying to work for our country. Uh, we found that it was a little bit more complicated than that with Von Braun. Gosh, this book, uh, folks, it's out today. You should, you've got to get it. The Hidden Nazi. The Untold Story of America's Deal with the Devil. So so kind of expand on that. The deal with the devil, really? I mean, was it was it that bad? I mean, and obviously there's got to be benefits from, you know, us using their scientists. But, I mean, were there any – when you say deal with the devil, you're just saying that it's morally wrong or is it is it worse than even that? Well, so I, I, I'm careful, I think, in the book to say – I probably would have done the same deal myself if I were in in the situation of the U.S. Army uh, CIC, uh, Counterintelligence Corps. Those are the the troops on the ground who who did the deal, I think, uh, with uh, with Kamler. Uh, I would have come to the same conclusion because Russia was going to be the existential threat. Russia could absolutely crush the United States, and their their way of life, uh, their philosophy of government was completely incompatible with ours. Uh, And... These Nazis had been fighting the Russians for years.
years. They had intelligence networks that, that were in, in existence uh, that we could sort of adopt as our own. And what Kamler brought, so we recruited lots of Nazis. What Kamler in particular brought was the rocket team and all the technology of all the secret weapons. Uh, there were you know, jet engines that he were, jet airplanes, Messerschmitts that he was in charge of and had access to, um, radar, uh, shapes, charges, nuclear research. There are so many different threads, uh, so many different stories developed in, in The Hidden Nazi, the book. Uh, it's just extraordinary. Uh, but we made a calculation, um, and I think the calculation was right, uh, to strike a deal with him because the technology he had was so extraordinary. I think it helped us win the Cold War. I think the war, the world would be uh, a different place uh, if we hadn't uh, done this deal with him. Did, um, did he cooperate with the U.S. government at all uh, beyond technology, uh, specifically uh, the, the Nuremberg trials? Well, that's a great question. Uh, in, in, in the book, The Hidden Nazi, we show that uh, he surrendered, then he was interrogated concerning missing funds, money, gold. Uh, he was interrogated in central Germany, which is where the rocket team was, and we, we believe at that point he was there helping round up uh, some you know, uh, a rocket scientists here and there who hadn't been uh, surrendered to the, to the U.S., and we have him we can place him in Nuremberg on the eve of the trial. Um, now, what you know, what you can surmise from that, we don't have documents saying what he was telling the United States government at the time, but uh, here's a guy who I think would have been the number one war criminal um, who's in Nuremberg, who never gets tried, who's reported suicide, who's reported dead, but we know he didn't die. Uh, so that, that just leads me to conclude he cooperated with the United States. He gave them testimony. Um, he was helpful um, and got away with it. Wow. Folks, we're talking with Dean Reuter. The book is out today, The Hidden Nazi, The Untold Story of America's Deal with the Devil. Centers around this guy I'd never heard of, this Nazi general, Hans Kamler. Uh, you, you guys have got to get this book. Uh, Mr. Reuter, I appreciate you spending time with us today. and. Thanks for writing this. It's always, uh, and I know you, you did a lot of research doing this, and I'm, I'm sure that you are really happy to see this all come to fruition. So thank you so much. Thanks for having me on, Paul. Absolutely. Dean Reuter, everybody, again, author of The Hidden Nazi, The Untold Story of America's Deal with the Devil. Check it out today.